I first went to stay with John Fu, one of the questions I asked him was, what do you need to believe in order to meditate? And he said there was one thing, the principle of karma. And when we hear the word karma, we usually think karma and rebirth, but he meant specifically the principle of action, that what you do is important. In fact, what you do shapes your experience. And if you're convinced of this, then you can do the meditation, because the meditation is a doing. Even very still states of meditation, there's an activity that's going on. There's a fabrication, a sankara. So when passage where the Buddha says that your experience of all the, the different contents, all the different aggregates that make up experience, has to get shaped into those things by the process of fabrication. In other words, there's a potential for a form, a potential for a feeling, potential for perception, fabrication, consciousness. And the act of fabricating is what makes these things into actual aggregates. It sounds abstract, but it's a very important lesson for the meditation, even from the very beginning. You sit here in the body. Of course, there's that perception right there that you're sitting in the body. That's a fabrication right there. But say there are many different things you could focus on right now. This possibility of choice, that's where karma comes in. You can choose any of the sensations that are coming in. There's kind of a buzz in different parts of the body. There's a potential for pain here. There's a potential for pleasure over there. All these different sensations are presenting themselves to you for you to do something about them. They've done studies of pain that show that pain isn't just a physical phenomenon. In other words, the pain isn't totally given. There's so many different messages coming into your brain right now. You can't possibly process them all, so you choose some of them. And the mind has a tendency to focus on pain, because that's usually a warning signal. But we don't have to. In other words, there can be a slight discomfort in a part of the body, and you focus on it, and you make it more and more painful, more and more of an issue. That's one thing you could do right now, That's and you don't realize it, but you have the choice whether or not to do that. Many times we have habitual ways of relating to sensations. And they're so habitual and so consistent that we think that there's no choice at all. This is the way things have to be, but they don't have to be that way. That's the other part of the principle of karma, is that you can change your actions. If some experience is dependent on fabrication, some experience is dependent on choice, well, you can, cha you can choose to change. You see this really clearly when you focus on the breath. The breath is always there in the body. And if you look carefully, you discover there are many levels. It's like looking up in the sky. Sometimes you you feel a breeze coming from the south, but you look up in the sky and you see that one layer of clouds is moving east, another layer of clouds, clouds is moving west. So there are lots of different layers of wind in the, in the atmosphere. It's the same way there's lots of different layers of breath going on in the body. And you can choose to focus on different ones. It's like you have a radio receiver. You can choose to tune in to different stations. The radio waves are all in the air. The radio waves from Los Angeles, radio waves from San Diego, even shortwave radio waves from who knows where, all over the place. They're going through this room right now. They're going through your body right now. When you turn on the radio, you choose which one you want to focus on, which one you want to listen to. So it means sorting out of all the possible sensations, just focusing on one, the, the breathness of the breath. Wherever you feel the sensation of the in and out breath most clearly, you focus right there. Now some of us have radios we haven't taken very good care of, and as soon as it 
you tune it into one station, it slips over to another. Well, you've got to keep tuning it back, tuning it back. But it's not just the tuning, it's what you do with the sensation when you're with it. Again, you can focus on the breath in such a way that makes it painful. Or you can focus on the way that makes it comfortable. And it's not just the givenness of the breath, but it's what you do with it that can make it more or less painful, more or less comfortable. To continue the analogy, it's like having a volume control on the radio. You can turn it up way loud so it hurts your ears. You can turn it way down soft so you can hardly hear it at all. But with time, you get a sense of what's just right. And then the level of your focus. And the pressure of your focus. And as you get tuned in more and more precisely, you discover there are more subtleties. Again, like the radio, when you re really get tuned very precisely onto the frequency, the static goes away. And you can hear subtleties in the signal that you couldn't hear before. And again, you can play with them. You can turn up the treble, turn up the bass, whatever you want. So even though the radio signal is just a given, it, it, you can do a lot with it. That's the element of karma in your meditation right now. It's what you're doing with the breath. And again, you can learn how to be more skillful in how you relate to it, so that you can sense this, not only the very obvious breath of the wind coming in and out of the lungs, but also the sensations that go through the whole body as you breathe in, as you breathe out, the, the patterns of movement in the body that actually bring the air into the lungs, let it go out. It's kind of a wave that goes through the body each time you breathe. And you begin to sense where in the body it's tense and where it's not tense, where it flows properly, where it doesn't flow properly. And again, it's not just a given. You can do things with that flow. You can improve the flow. If you notice that there's tension in some part of the body, you relax it. And oftentimes it improves the breath flow not only at that one spot, but in other parts of the body as well. And you begin to have a sense of the the body is a whole series of different patterns. A tightening up here may mean lead to a tightening up over there, and it all gets connected to a tightening up. Or you can loosen it up. That's your choice. And you find that sometimes it gets so loose that you drift off. Okay, You've got to learn how to do it just right so that you can stay with the sensation, keep your focus. And even if the radio signal begins to drift a little bit, you can follow it precisely. Stay right with it. At this point, you can let go of the sensation of the in and out breath, the, the coarse one, the obvious breath, and focus more on the subtle breath flow in the body. And as you work through all the different p parts of the body where it feels tense or blocked or sort of squeezed out. And let the breath sensations fill all those little nooks and crannies. There comes a greater and greater sense of fullness, a greater sense of refreshment. That's probably what bit date means, say. Eh? It's the drinking in of the good sensation. Because the word bit date which we don't normally translate as rapture, is also related to the word for drinking. So you drink in this nice sensation, it feels full, it feels refreshing all the way through the body, because you've opened up all the little cells in the body and allow the breath to enter. And when you get that sense of fullness, and there's a more greater tendency to relax. It's, it's not a pretty image, but sometimes I think about a mosquito when it's finally hit a big nerve, excuse me, a big vein in your body. And it just sticks its little proboscis in, and it just stays right there. And then every, the wings go weak, and the feet go weak. And no matter how much you try to brush it away, it just doesn't want to go. It's just drinking in what it wants. 
It's the same with the mind. As soon as that sensation begins to fill up in the body, there's this quality of just letting go of everything else. And no matter what other disturbances come, you're not the least bit interested because you've got something that's really satisfying. You would almost say that it's a, it's a sensation to die for. Just let go of everything else because this is totally absorbing. Because you've opened up every part of the body, every part of your awareness to, for this sensation to come in. And as you stay there, and as the mind grows more and more still, there's, you find there's a deeper sensation of absolute fullness. It's a still kind of feeling. No longer has that flow, the sense of flowing back and forth. There's a real stillness in the body. As I said this afternoon, there's still a little bit of sense of air exchange on the very surface of the body, the surface of your awareness. But deep down inside, there's a great stillness. And there's no longer the sense of drinking in because you're absolutely full. So the image that a John Lee uses of the ice cube, or the vapor coming off the cube. It's a very kind of vaporous movement around the edge of your, your awareness, but that's about it as far as the breath. And then finally even that stops, and then you just awareness fills the body. There's a sense of brightness, even though there may not be a sense of light to go along with it, but it's, it's a peculiar quality. There's a sensation, a physical sensation, a feeling tone of brightness, clarity fills the whole body, and you're just sitting there in the middle of it. There's no need to rush through these stages. You find one that you can tune into, you stay right there. And as you stay with that sense of stillness, if that's what you're, you're focused on, begin to realize that you can choose to give a shape to it or not, the shape of the body. You can focus on the, the sensations that give shape, or you can choose to ignore them. This is where you really see the principle of a karma coming to play, coming into play in the meditation. It's almost as if the various sensations in the body have turned into a mist, just these little breath droplets, just kind of shimmering there. And you realize there's space in between them. The whole body is filled with this space. And so instead of focusing on the little droplets, you can focus on the space. This gives you a really clear lesson in how much choice you have in how you experience the present moment. Just a simple sensation of having a body here. You realize there are lots of different sensations and lots of different ones you can focus on. And there's a skill in how you choose your sensations and in how you magnify the ones you want and you just put aside the ones you don't. So even though this is just training and concentration, there's also a lot of discernment that has to go on as well. As the Buddha once said, he requires both tranquility and insight in order to get good, strong states of absorption. And he never talks about insight without the question of karma, without the question of skillfulness in what you're doing. So this is what lays the groundwork. So when the time comes to consider issues of inconstancy, stress, and not self, you've already got the proper context. You've created a good space inside, a good space in the present moment. So there's no sense of having to grasp after this or grasp after that. There's a sense of fullness that comes, and you're in a much better mood to consider things for what they actually are. So when insight comes, it's not a destabilizing thing. Sometimes if you think in the wrong way about inconstancy or stress or not self, it can get really disorienting. But when you start thinking about these issues in the context of what you're doing in the meditation, it gets even more and more stabilizing. 
This is how concentration, tranquility, insight, discernment all come together in a really healthy and balanced way.